So, Simon, no sooner uh, have we seen Argentina disappear off to Buenos Aires with um, the World Cup trophy. The Jules Rimet trophy. The Jules Rimet. Uh, FIFA President Gianni Infantino has been spouting um, to anyone that wants to listen, and we want to listen. He's understood to be pushing uh, to hold the World Cup every three years in what has been described as a long-term plan to revolutionise international football. He is determined to change the status quo, isn't he? The Qatar 2022 apparently generated record revenues for yeah. FIFA. 6.2 billion quid. An increase of almost another billion yeah. on the 2018 World Cup in Russia. So it would seem, am I right in this, a Winter World Cup tournament has very much opened up FIFA's eyes for opportunity here. Um, and it seems they're going to grab it no matter what. Does the mantra grow the game, the game globally just mean make more money? Is that, is that what it means to him in well, FIFA? Well, I mean, FIFA's object, object is to make money to reinvest surely into the structure of football. That's FIFA is a not-for-profit, you know, laughably. Yeah. In terms of its ideals are that everything, every revenue it uh, generates should be reinvested back in the into the structure of football. And we've seen how that's worked, haven't we, um, in previous incarnations. And, of course, uh, businesses and circumstances are to change. And it is, in fact... Gianni Infantino's job to advance international football. That is his raison d'etre. Yeah. So we can, on one hand, say, well, what's he up to? On the other hand, we can say, well, why shouldn't he be up to that in terms of advancing international football? Because that's what it says on the tin for him to do. Now, whether that means that a World Cup should be moved from what they debated a, a couple of years ago and they got Arsene Wenger to be their, uh, you know, their poster boy for it, um, about a two, uh, you know, a biannual World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or where they're going to move it to three now. I mean, I, you know, we, we sit in the studio and we debate with ex-footballers like Martin Keown that talk about player welfare and the necessity to make schedules more accommodating to the players. And there's an element of truth behind what he says because if the players can't perform at the highest level because they're impacted upon by the amount of games, then the product will be diminished and it's not, no longer an exercise in anything other than futility. So I don't read this. I don't read this as some awful situation where the Infantino is suddenly doing things that are so unpalatable. I think we're heading for a power grab, though, Simon. Well, That's what we're heading between for. whom and whom? Between well, FIFA, UEFA, well, I, or between FIFA and domestic football? I also think it's a legitimate question to say to Infantino when he was in front of cameras yesterday, I don't think he was asked, how much of the $6.2 goes back into football? The lot? Well, if it's a not... Because if it's not, it should be. Well, we have seen, and we have seen in previous incarnations how that has played out and the opportunities that have been created and the absolute abuse of power. And we know this. We said it yesterday. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And when you look at these um, these FIFA congresses, it's almost like some demented sect, you know, of people that are uh, you know, subscribing to the religion of football. You know, Infantino is 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 certainly better than previous incarnations. He's in a very effective operator, whether we like it or we don't. And it's his job to to advance international football. Tournament football is where the money is. Yeah. And where the money is, is where the opportunities exist. And anyone that doesn't think that money is the thing, that we are in a country at this moment in time being dismantled on the basis of people not being paid the money that they think they're entitled to and the, and the, and the, and the money that they need to be able to survive and thrive in the world. And everything turns on money. We talk about the control of our, of our media and who owns it. We talk about Elon Musk spending $44 billion buying a social media platform that's never turned a copper coin. But it's about money and influence. And football has all of those. Now, what, we, what we'd like to see and what I think is the challenge that we all have and I think you're in the same space as me, is the transparency of the circumstances. Absolutely. Because we know that they're going to go to the to the Mexican, American and Canadian World Cup, and we know that Trump promised them $15 billion. And we need to understand far better where and why and how this money is distributed. Right, right. And, we, as, and, as, and as a matter of course, I don't think we do. I think we don't understand, and some people would say what the great unwashed wouldn't understand even if you told them. But that's not necessarily the premise that you base things upon. Just tell us. Though. FIFA is an organisation supposedly for the people, from the people, and because of the people, and right. because it's the people's game. Yeah. So with that in mind, it does cause me great concern. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.